In this tutorial we're going to look in detail at the Quick Engrave toolpath strategy. Uh, this toolpath strategy is slightly different from most of those that we will encounter in the product because it is aimed specifically at some unusual uh, tooling that you can mount in a CNC machine which is essentially a sprung loaded tool that is dragged over the surface of the material so not a true cutting path but a, a marking toolpath strategy where we use the pressure of the spring against the surface of the material uh, to cut it rather than a precise CNC Z position. So that makes it slightly different but we'll work through it uh, and, and look at all the options. Uh, to do that I've got some very simple artwork here, a bit of text and I've set up some material which uh, represents a brass plate and the intention here is to uh, engrave this text over the brass plate uh, using the quick engrave strategy to make a name plaque. So all of this tutorial really involves the toolpath uh, creation so I'm going to switch now to the toolpaths tab using this button on the left and in the toolpaths tab we can see the quick engraving toolpath uh, option here uh, in the top right so I'm going to select that which opens the quick engrave toolpath form. Uh, like most of the toolpath forms it's filled in really from the top to the bottom and you can work through it in a very logical way starting with the selection of what tool you're going to use and again there is a slight uh, difference here from most uh, of your other strategies but let's we'll open the toolpath uh, data, tool database here and you can see really that um, while you can use uh, any tool geometry you like really um, it has to be matching uh, a specialist bit of kit and the diamond drag is the most common type that's used for this which is essentially simply a uh, an industrial diamond which is scratches into the surface of the material that you drag it across and as such you'll notice with the diamond drag tool that we don't include a depth here there's no cut down a step down or, or cut depth because we don't control that all we can control is the pressure that we apply to it and that will result in approximately a, a, a line width which is what you specify in the cutting parameters for the diamond drag tool okay so we're going to use the diamond drag tool for this example uh, and as I say we can place a value in the next field down here which is, is marked depth or pressure or depth slash pressure and the reason that that is marked as such is it is not a true depth it is simply the amount that we are going to move down in Z in order to apply pressure to the tip of the tool so the tool will not cut necessarily to this depth this is simply the amount we're going to press the tool down against the surface by which obviously will it will um, apply pressure so in essence the more depth we apply here the more pressure that we're applying to the surface uh, so now I'm going to select all of our text and I'm going to choose whether to just simply outline the text in this case or whether we want to fill it in so if I calculate simply with outline selected uh, we get a simple toolpath strategy here we can see it in the 2d view and also in the 3d view which would just uh, mark the edges of our text but we also have the option to fill inside as well so we can work around our um, vectors and we can also fill them in either with an offset strategy so in this case stepping over by um, 25 thousand uh, thousands of an inch we can keep going inside the shape to fill it in or we can hatch the shape so we can um, just use single straight lines to do it and with the hatching option we can set the angle of the hatch so I shall just calculate again using 45 degrees and again in the 2D view we can see clearly the 45 degree marking we're going to get as we can in the 3D view and with the text selected still I can also switch on cross hatching and calculate again and this essentially does hatching but in both directions so you can choose whether to fully cross hatch or simply use a single direction hatch so that's really the essence of the basic option here so in this case we're taking a diamond drag tool which we're assuming to be sprung and we're just dragging it over the surface with a pressure as if we'd pressed it down by 0.1 of an inch against the spring uh, to mark the surface of the material we don't know what depth this will cut to um, because it's simply a product of the pressure and the hardness of the material however some machines uh, have some specialist uh, tips to their uh, or specialist bit of kit called the nose cone and that uh, has a tool that's fitted at a known 
um, depth. So the tool protrudes from the end of the nodes by a known amount. And by making sure that you press that right into the surface, you can guarantee the depth of cut and generally produce a nicer fit. So if uh, you have access to that, you can support that is supported in the strategy too. You should select the nose cone here. We need some more information about it, so we need to know what is the depth by which that tool protrudes from the tip of the nose cone. Uh, in this case 0 0.02 of an inch. We can also do more than one pass with it. So uh, while this is the maximum depth of cut we can get, uh, we might not get that in one pass uh, at this pressure. So we might want to do more than one. So we can set here to do say three passes. Um, but with a nose cone we know we should never cut uh, more than this depth uh, because at that point we'll be pressing the nose cone against the surface and we'll just be in by the depth of the tool. Uh, but it's going to take three passes. So let's just quickly calculate that just to see the difference. Essentially what we've got here is exactly the same pattern but repeated three times and that's what you'd expect for this um, uh, toolpath strategy assuming you have a nose cone. Okay so um, that's essentially everything there is um, in the calculation process. This uh, form is slightly different from other toolpath strategies however because you can directly send this um, right now to your tool and the idea is because this is a quick engraving strategy which is generally um, if you need this strategy your tool will be set up and you'll be ready to go very quickly uh, we can avoid going back out of the uh, tool path and using the conventional post-processing step and just do it directly inside the form so you can either save the toolpath here or perhaps more interestingly if your machine supports direct output um, this option will become available so one machine for example which does support direct output is the uh, Roland Roland EGX 300 engraving machine so once that's selected I now have the option to output directly to this machine and when I select this option uh, this uh, button appears which allows me to deal with the specific driver related um, options for this machine. In the case of the Roland machine if I was to click this it would actually bring up my print uh, dialog because the Roland supplies its driver in the form of a printer driver and I'd be able to select the Roland from here and actually proceed as if it was a printing process. Uh, but crucially what would happen here is the machine would, as soon as I started this off, uh, just like a printer the machine would start running and doing the engraving. Uh, if I close this down we can see that we do still have um, a conventional toolpath um, which you're probably familiar with uh, and that can be output or examined uh, in the usual way. So in this case I can look for example at the machining times uh, or we can simply select this toolpath and save it from our um, conventional save toolpaths dialog as well. Uh, notice that the option to, to output direct is still here too so if you save your file you can still come back and immediately output it direct to uh, a machine from the conventional save toolpaths um, option. Okay so that really is uh, all the elements related to quick engrave uh, and if your machine supports this uh, floating head engraving tool then this is the toolpath you can use.